So last week, while I was in South Africa, uh, Reverend Mitei was the preacher. And uh, you know for him, he goes for the names that are not easily known in the Bible. So I thought I'll go for the name that is easily known. So I've gone for Elijah. He spoke about Obadiah in uh, 1 Kings uh, chapter number 18. And so we are going to begin there. We're just going to uh, continue with that sermon. And it has really to do with the complexities of life. He spoke to us about Obadiah serving God in the situation that he was in where the honor of God was not there, uh, where Baal was worshipped, but Obadiah was able to thrive in that situation and he was able to serve God faithfully even amid his uh, challenges. <clears throat> now, this, today we're going to look at God's gracious empowerment in difficult times. And uh, what happened is after Obadiah had, uh, after he had been told by Elijah, go tell your master I want to meet him. And of course he was very threatened and thinking, what is Elijah telling me? Because you've been, he's been wanting to meet you, but the agenda is probably to kill you. And finally he decides, he goes, he tells him, and uh, Elijah uh, says, yes, I want to see this man. Immediately when he sees uh, when, when, when Ahab, sorry, when Ahab, uh, the king, sees Elijah, this is what he tells him. Is that you, trouble of Israel, trouble of Israel? And then Elijah answers straight. We are looking at chapter 18, verses uh, 17 or 18. There he says, I, ha I have not met trouble for Israel. Elijah replied, but you and your father's family... You have abandoned the Lord's commands and have followed the Baals. So Elijah faces Ahab squarely. He tells him, while you are looking at me as the troublemaker, you and your family are the troublemaker of Israel because you've abandoned the ways of God. And so he tells him, so that we have this thing dealt with once and for all, Definitely the Lord God is not happy with Israel and the fact that we don't have rain for all this time is not a natural thing. God has stopped the rain uh, coming and so he tells him for us to square this thing so that we can move on, let us summon the entire nation leadership to come. Let us summon everyone to come. And he tells him don't forget when you meet your wife, Jezebel, whom we will see in a short while, who is the one who actually brought in the worship of Baal into Israel, tell her to bring that 450, uh, to bring along the 450 uh, Baal prophets and the ones who are worshiping uh, the other god of Asherah. And so Ahab does that, and then he tells him, let's meet in Mount Gemel. And then this is what uh, Elijah tells the people when they meet in the mountain. He says, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then do what? Follow him. You would expect the people to say, no, 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 no. You know we are Israelites. We can't follow Baal. We have been following God. But the Bible records everybody kept quiet. Ding. Because they knew where they were. Guilty as child. They had already left the faith. And so God definitely was not happy with the nation. But Elijah went on to tell them, today, let us do this simple thing. Let us offer sacrifices. I will get a bull for myself. I'll get a bull for the prophets of Baal. And let the God who answers the prayer by consuming the sacrifice, 
uh, after it, the God that does that will know for sure that that is the true God. This is a story you know, but I just want to recap for anyone who has not heard this story. So what happens then is the people watch and people laugh that actually what they answered, they said, all the people said, what you have said is what? <laughs> is good. Let us proceed. They love watching superpowers fighting. They now know we have Baal against, you know, God, the living God. So let's see who is going to win this game. So Elijah says, no, for me, there's no hurry. Let's begin with Baal. Probably we can finish it there. Let, 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 let's begin allowing them the opportunity. So they come from morning, chanting prayer. You know, they did everything and then saying, now Baal, bring fire. Consume the offerings. Nothing happened. By midday, they are still doing it. Nothing happens. By evening, they now realize time is going. Nothing. They begin now even to cut themselves so that the Bible records blood was flowing from their bodies because that is the way they would do their prayers. I'm glad we don't do that. <laughs> it is terrible because uh, you torture yourselves and yet it's an idol. There's nothing, no prayer will be answered and yet you are going through great depths of suffering. So they went through it and nothing happened. So Elijah said, okay, you've seen it for yourself. Nothing has happened. Now it's my turn. So he organizes the altar and then arranges it well so that there is a trench and then he tells the people, now mine, I want it to be very transparent. Bring water after you had placed it. He said, pour as much water so that you don't say we have hidden any fire anywhere. <laughs> so they did pour the water, it was done, and then this is what Elijah went and said. Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord, answer me, so these people will know that you are a Lord, that you, Lord, are God and that you are turning hearts back again. Listen to what the Bible says. Then the fire of the Lord fell and burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, and the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. All the people saw this and fell prostrate and cried, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Amen. Finally, a revival comes. <laughs> Now people realize we were lost. So they fell down, worshipped God and said, we are going to worship God. He is the Lord. He is God. And so Elijah lives there very happy. He goes and kneels. Uh, now that the, it is very clear who God is, he goes, kneels. Between his legs he prays. Sends the person, go check if there is rain, nothing, seven times. Then the guy comes and reports and says, there is just a small cloud like the hand of a person. Says, that is okay. Go tell uh, uh, the king to go faster because rain is what? <laughs> it's coming. And very soon the clouds uh, piled up and there was heavy rain. And Elijah had been taken by the spirit so that he was even ahead in Jezreel. Amen. Wow, what an encounter. <laughs> and what a day of glory, isn't it? <laughs> For Elijah. Because now he can declare openly that our God hears prayer. And everybody had seen, isn't it? Not only just come and consume the offerings, but also when he prayed to him for rain, the rains poured and the land was healed. Now, after that, I'm sure in Elijah's mind, he was celebrating. And I don't know about you, if you are Elijah, if you put yourself in that position, you would be going, wow, God has honored me, I'm his servant, isn't it? <laughs> and I know for sure that he lives. There's no doubt about that one. You are so confident of God's presence, you are so confident of who God is, and there's no doubt at all that he delivers 
and comes through for you. I told somebody another day, I said, Elijah is one of his own kind because I'm imagining here, if I was told, Reverend Mairori, come, do the same prayer that uh, Elijah was doing, I would go back and pray again. <laughs> Tell God, really, I need to be sure that you are going to do this so that your name is not embarrassed in any way. You can, you can imagine humanly what, 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 what is going through his mind, but he was so confident that God will deliver. I told you the story when I was brought a sick person when I was somewhere in missions. And the people basically were bringing the sick person to test if our God heals or not. And they, it was a mission area. This person was going to die. And so I told God, for the sake of your name, so that these people can know you, you heal. That one is a private prayer. I, I didn't pray publicly. <laughs> and then now I came and prayed for the person. The Lord did a miracle and healed that person. And that changed uh, a lot of people who had come. So basically, Elijah had that, and that turned Israel in a very big, in a very big way. And uh, Elijah would walk tall, knowing that God has done. But verses 19 takes a different turn. Chapter 19, sorry, takes a different turn. When the wife of Ahab whose name is called who? Jezebel. You've had that name before, isn't it? And I, I think most people don't call their children by that name. I don't know. <laughs> but if you, if you do, we'll just pray over that. <laughs> but this was a lady with the spirit of Baal. She actually was the leader of false and uh, wrong worship in Israel. But she had been brought to the palace and she was misleading the whole nation. Her strength was that she had captured the nation through the false prophets. And so everything was under her control. When she was told that Elijah, the man of God, has slaughtered all the prophets, she actually swore and said, by tomorrow, you see her, Nini, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not do what? Take, I do not make your life like that of one of them. This is a message that she sent to Elijah. So you can imagine Elijah, a person who has just encountered God and his power. I don't know what happens. Sometimes this woman uh, makes the God of Elijah in his own mind to be smaller because of the threat of his own life. So that he's running for his dear life because of a threat from a lady called Jezebel. And Elijah was so afraid and began to run for his life. There's something to note here, church. One, normally just where things sometimes, the rain begins beating us in our faith journey. When you have these high times of great success, you've slayed the giants, whatever you, 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 you would call, whatever battle you are in or whatever thing you are looking for, and God has given you great, great, great success. There is always a danger that after that time you may begin dealing with physical, emotional, and spiritual exhaustion because you've put a, a lot of your energy in that fight. So when Jezebel comes to Elijah, he finds him when he's at his weakest point. He's exhausted spiritually, he's exhausted uh, emotionally, and so he succumbs to the threat very quickly. And he begins a downward spiral that we are going to look. But again, praise God that we have a gracious God who empowers us in difficult times. We have a God that doesn't forget us. 
When we are on horn high, he is with us. When things come tumbling down, the same God is with us. Amen? <laughs> he uses us to perform great miracles, to do great things. But even when we are at our lowest, he still reaches out to us to help us and make sure that we go through that difficulty as he holds our hands and as he walks with us. A story is told of a missionary who worked in uh, the northern Africa, and you know it's a desert area. So he's basically almost like Elijah. He, he has done his best serving God. Uh, tried to reach out to as many people, but then persecution broke, and he became a target. And so they actually began chasing him and uh, wanting to eliminate him to kill his life. So he ran for his dear life. And as he ran, he realized the people were following him and they were going to catch up with him. And as he thought, what else do I do? Even if I keep running, they are going to catch me anyway. He saw a small cave. And so he decided, I'm going to enter into this cave. And I wait for my death. If they catch me here, that is fine. So while in the cave, as he had entered, he saw a spider coming and uh, weaving, you know, uh, making the spider net, net. And doing it so fast, he was tempted to say, can I just kill this, uh, would you call it an insect? <laughs> can I kill this spider? But he thought, you know, let, let me leave the spider uh, do its work. The spider wove very quickly and then, you know, the work, its work was done. So these people who are chasing this missionary uh, arrived at the, at the cave. And surely because of the, you know, you can easily trace where somebody, the footprints, they say this must be the place this guy has gone in. And so they decided, one of them actually said, this is, this is it, we, we don't have to go any other place. But another one looked and said, look, there's a spider's uh, web how could he enter if there is a spider's web? It is impossible, so he cannot be here. Let's keep going forward so that we, we, we seek for him elsewhere. Praise the Lord that he reaches out to us and saves us. <laughs> you see how God uses a spider <laughs> just to save his servant. So later, this man wrote this. He, he managed to, of course, escape later and he lived. But he wrote this, where God is, a spider's web is like a wall. Where God is not, a wall is like a spider's web. Amen. Very profound, isn't it? <laughs> so where God is, when God is with, with you, he said, even a spider's web becomes a wall that the enemies cannot reach you. But where God is not, even the wall becomes like a spider's net. It can just be thrashed and uh, you, 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 you know you will be rich. God comes through for his people in difficult time. That is true as we read the story of the missionary Nolan. Back to Elijah. Elijah at this point is struggling with what I would say is serious depression. He is spiraling downwards because, as I said, after this very serious battle, he is spiritually exhausted, emotionally exhausted, physically exhausted. What does he do when he hears about Jezebel? I have no more energy. <laughs> Let me just run for my dear, <laughs> my dear life, save myself. And he begins the journey. He ran because he was afraid. But God does not leave his servants. Even in that difficult time, with that happening, God does not leave his dear servants. So, probably, too, what is going on in the mind of Josiah, not, not Josiah, Elijah, is surely... And I can identify with this. You can say, surely, I have served God faithfully. I have just killed Baal's prophets. I have turned the nation back to God. 
have prayed and the rains have come. How can God let me die, be killed by this woman called Jezebel? So he had some unmet expectations because his expectations were, were that for sure, if I'm a servant of God and have done this, this cannot happen to me. This can happen to only other people, but not me, particularly after this type of battle. Turn to your neighbor and tell them difficulties or, or sufferings comes to everybody. <clears throat> yes. There is a false understanding amongst us as believers sometimes that when I'm a believer, I will not go through challenges in life. That things that are difficult, pain, suffering will not come my way. And so when it comes, we begin looking at it in a very negative way. In fact, some people would accuse others and say, this has happened to them because of this and this. Uh, I, I was told by Reverend Mite in, in Ukambani is called Timana. <laughs> and uh, in other places it has its own names. <laughs> it has. People, people associate suffering, pain, to a sin or something that has, uh, somebody needs to do because he's not right with God. But you read this passage, if there was someone right with God at this point, it was who? Elijah, isn't it? That the presence of God was with him. I want to encourage all of us uh, who are here and may the enemy not whisper to you so that you believe. Whenever you go through challenges in life, it can be a loss of a loved one. It can be being sucked from your job. It can be, you know, challenges that you are going through marriage or anything else. Don't rush quickly to say, this is because of this and this. God understands that this is a fallen world. The enemy is real. He fights back. He has just won a battle, and so the devil uses Jezebel to try and scare him and finish him. But because of the right understanding, I believe that God will give him in the end, he will then realize that when you are up, successful, uh, getting promoted, getting good salaries, or doing anything else, the family is doing well, all that, the same God who is with you during that time is the same God who is with you when you are crushed and you are going through a downward spiral in life. The same God never leaves you. He walks with you and he will help you during that time. So, uh, in the journey of uh, Elijah in going downwards, he actually isolates himself. If you read uh, verses 3 and 4, uh, he actually leaves the person they were with. Uh, Elijah was afraid then for his life when he came to Beersheba. He left his servant there and decided the journey alone. Dangerous thing to do. A dangerous thing to do. God has called us into community. Once you begin isolating yourself, particularly when you are in such a situation, the enemy has a way of getting in as we see, and uh, would like to destroy our lives. Just as an advice, I am nowadays encouraging, if you are a university student, don't live alone in that hostel, amen? Get somebody else, live together. If you've gotten a job and you are still not married, get a friend who has the same values with you, stay together. There is power, there is, uh, there, is, there is great wisdom in being with people. When you are alone, the enemy has a way of coming and whispering to you, trying to take you in a path that can destroy your life. But because you don't have someone around, you can easily fall. And anybody else, the plan of God for us, because God he is triune. He is God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So it's community. 
His plan for the human race is that we live in community. And so the devil's strategy is always to isolate so that when you are isolated, then he can deal with you when you are uh, by yourself. So he isolates him, he, and then from there in verses 4b and 5a, uh, he says, I have had enough, Lord. Uh, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Elijah becomes suicidal. He becomes suicidal again. Being alone, no advice. He goes the next step, which is very serious, downward spiral, becoming suicidal. And then he also lost perspective, as we read in verses 10, where he now thinks, wow, in the whole of the nation of Israel, there is nobody else who is worshiping God. I have been left alone. Have you, been going, have you gone through problems and then you realize it must be me alone? <laughs> Everybody else, you find people smiling, they are happy, they are going, and then you are saying, it must be <laughs> me alone. Uh, you, are a religion, you are Elijah's cousin or brother. <laughs> uh, because what happens is when you are under pressure and the focus is in you, the problem is so heavy. It is very easy to focus on self and think, I must be the wrong person. Uh, everybody else is okay, I am the only one. And that is a lie of the devil. You will see how God then corrects Elijah to say that is not the truth. So Elijah, this great man of God who has just done great miracles that I don't think has, you know, it, 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 is, it, is, it is very historical because he, he, he actually demonstrated the power of God in a very, very powerful way. Now he's on his downward uh, spiral. But does God reject him? Does God look at him and say, look, Elijah, I just did this with you. You cannot even think. You can't even remember what I've just done. You don't know who I am. No, he doesn't. See what God does. And my hope at the end of this church is that you will see that we have a great God. We have a loving God who reaches deeply to us. We have a loving God who loves you individually, knows your name. And whatever you are going through in life, he knows and he's coming to rescue you. We do know, we do know that the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. And today we are going to celebrate communion just because of that Again, offering from God saying, I know where you are and I'm coming down so that I can save you. See what he does for Elijah. It's, this is repeated in scripture in many places where God reaches down to us so that he can lift us up, he can empower us so that we can move on in life in this complex world that we live in. He doesn't leave him, he doesn't call him stupid, he doesn't call him uh, whatever names that he, he, anybody would call because you would be really wondering why would this person go this path while I've just shown him who I am, while I've just shown him that I can do great things in life, God understands him and comes in a very special way. Look at verses 5b and 9 through 9a. It says, well, uh, it's, it's, a long, it's a long read, but uh, this is what God does. God meets Elijah at the Elijah's need. But let me read. Then he lay, sorry. Then he lay in the bush and fell asleep. At once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there was by his head and, and there by his head was some baked bread over hot coals and the story goes on. And then God just tells him, uh, my son, just wake up and eat something. Praise God. If it were you, and this was your child who is doing this, you would probably not begin where God has begun. You would begin by probably calling them names and saying, why would you want to kill yourself? Why would you even reach this point in life where you are lying down saying, let me die? The lesson there, friends, is God meets us at the point of our need. Praise God. God is so gracious, so loving, that he understands us 
so well that when we are going through stuff, when our life is going through a downward spiral, for whatever reason, God does not condemn you. God comes to you in love and actually like Elijah tells you, get up, I prepared a meal for you. He will reach out to you in love and he will meet you at the point of your need and help you. This is a great lesson even as we, as, you know, uh, in, in, in helping those around us that are going through difficult times. The second thing that God does is he allows Elijah to verbalize his feelings. 9b through 10, it says, Elijah basically says, God, you know, I am the only one. When he was asked, uh, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for you, all that, all that. I'm the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me. Was that true or false? See, it's false, isn't it? Well, the idea that I, partly true in what they were trying to do, but that the fact that he's the only one left, we are going to see that that is not true. But God does not condemn him. He listens to him. He allows Elijah to pour his heart to him. I want to encourage us as we go through difficult times, whether it is, the, again, um, when, when, whenever you have serious bereavement and we've gone through that as, as a Milimani family, many, many families have gone through that and you are heavy in your heart or, you know, going through tough things during in your, in your workplace or your business is stumbling down, things are not going right and all that, God wants us as his children to talk to him, to speak out our hearts. It doesn't have to be 100%, you know, that you understand what it is. What God is inviting us there is that I am your friend. Speak to me, praise God. I am your friend, speak to me. Whatever issues that you have, he's asking you what is going on, and he just says, pour out. Without condemnation, you can share your heart to God, and he, will, he listens to you. So the lesson there is God allows us to verbalize, to verbalize our feelings. Uh, God, again in verses 11 through 14, a lesson that we see what he does, he demonstrates his power and gentleness to Elijah. And uh, this is a sermon on its own, but I will not go there. <laughs> but what he does is after he has fed him and after he has allowed him to verbalize and, uh, you know, all that, he, Elijah takes this journey to the mountain of God. And then what happens then, God shows himself to uh, Elijah. And at first he comes as what? Those who are reading their Bible. <laughs> a serious wind, isn't it? Shattering everything else. And then he comes as an earthquake. Well, of course, and then when Elijah looked, God was not there. Earthquake and then fire. And, you know, over in the past, you look at when God was Speaking to Moses, he came, he came as a burning bush. So all these things could be true, but because of where Elijah was, and again, what we are learning today is about the graciousness of God in, in the beginning over our situation and wanting to empower us. God chooses a different way of revealing himself to Elijah. There was a picture that I normally see of the former president Kenyatta, the first Kenyatta, Yule Mze, CEO Kenyatta, we were juicy, uh, talking to, <laughs> talking to uh, the former president, Moy. And uh, that picture, as many of you probably have seen, is, is, is actually Kenyatta goes right to the ear and whispers something to President Moy, whether, whether it was a very secret message or, or something, but... You, when you look at it, you would say, wow, these people are so close. <laughs> he would have actually spoken to him and told him what he wanted to do. He's the president, isn't it? But he turns and then whispers uh, in a manner that the deputy president then would see and say, this person really uh, 
uh, values me in a, in a very special way. What God chooses to do with Elijah is he whispers to him. He comes and says, hey, listen, you are my beloved child. And this is the situation you found yourself. And he comes to him even more than a friend so that he can get the message that God wants him to do. In our lives, as we have our theology about God, when we go through challenges, sometimes we expect God to do miracles so that we see that it is God who has done it. Huge things. Sometimes I've met people who move from one crusade to the next looking for a miracle sign. And sometimes people have paid a lot of money to people for something to be performed. And I want to encourage you, don't waste your money, don't waste your time, amen? <laughs> God knows you by name, you are his child, amen? God understands the situation that you are going. And if there is anything, you know, one of the things I would love and pray as your pastor that you learn today is that God is as happy with you when you are up there celebrating and doing great things, miracles, performing things for the world. He is as happy with you and lovingly loves you when you are going down and you are at the rock bottom. He is still your God. Amen? He is still your God. And he wants to reach deep down to you to help you, to lift you, to empower you during that time. Never allow the devil in any setting or in any place to whisper to you the false thoughts that God doesn't love you anymore. That God doesn't care for you, that is why he has allowed this. That is a lie from the pit of hell. Because it wants, the enemy wants to take you, continue in the downward spiral. God loves you, even during that time. And that is why he reaches out to Elijah in that very, very, very special way. And then in verses 15 through 18, God gives uh, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, gives uh, Elijah an assignment and corrects him gently. Amen. <laughs> this is where probably all of us would have begun, <laughs> particularly that one of correction. We would have actually said, Elijah, you see, how can you go this way while you know who I am? But God takes him through, feeds him, uh, shows himself to him whispers to him, and then finally now he's, he tells him, by the way, Elijah, when he had said that, when he asked him the same question, he said, I'm the only one remaining. He tells him, no, 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 no. By the way, Elijah, I, am, I love you deeply. I want to send you to go even anoint, anoint another prophet who is there. Amen? Another, another person who will succeed from you so that you know there are other people. <laughs> one as if you were... <laughs> When you go this place, go and anoint this, and then anoint this one to take over from this. It gives him an assignment, tells him, I have empowered you back, go back to work. But by the way, he ends by telling him, I have reserved for myself 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to what? To Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. Praise God. <laughs> there are always remnants, and God is telling him, Elijah, you are not alone in this battle. Church, as we bring this message to a close and as the worship team joins me, I know life and it can be brutal. In this complex world, even as you serve God faithfully, things happen. And they come in various ways. And it, as I said earlier, it may come through our workplaces, families, businesses, whatever places, challenges do come. And our understanding of God and how he relates to us during those times of downward spiraling is very, 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 very crucial. So that when you are fired today and told there is no more job, you don't curse God. Amen? You know God, 
the God who helped that person to put their pen on your name and employ you is the same God who will take care of you even at this particular time. He has not left you. During the time of bereavement where you've lost a very dear person, you would say the same God who blessed us with this person is the same God who is with us during this particular time. The same God who gave you that business and it was thriving and the enemy probably has hit it coming down, that same God is there for you during that particular time and he will walk you through that journey. My prayer for you is that you will see the faithfulness of God in your life. And as we stand so that we sing this song, so that we pray, and I'm joined by Elder Boya, I would like for you to go deep because challenges in life bring wounds, they bring fear, and they sometimes hold us that we cannot move forward. And God is saying today, I want you to be as productive. I want you today to be as empowered. Even during your spiraling coming down, he wants to empower you. He wants to lift you just like how he lifted Elijah so that you can be productive for his kingdom. So that the situations you are in will not define you, but the person that will define you will be your God. Amen? Shall we sing together this song?